The playoffs weren't in the cards for the New Orleans Saints, so we're going to examine how we got here, what big decisions are coming this offseason, and why Saints fans should have some hope for the future today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And of course, a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. Those of you who make us your first listen every single day and never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use code LOCKDOWN to get $20 off your order. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Happy Wednesday again to you. Second one of the second one of the day. And we're knocking out these last few debriefs swiftly. So I don't have any clever quips or one-liners. I burned all of them oh, on the no. first show. Well, we got two, another double dip tomorrow. So that's right. A lot of double yeah. dip in the next couple of weeks. So keep your Good head on swivel and subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, um, let's dive into the saints. New Orleans saints. They come up just short on tiebreakers in the NFC South. Um, they, uh, had a lot of really good metric, uh, production across a full 17 game season, as you pointed out in the pre-show Joe, uh, but this is a team that comes up just short in their bid to win the NFC South. And as a result, we got to talk about what went wrong for the saints here on this episode of the show. Yeah. Nine and eight, they missed due to tiebreakers and of course head to head losses to the Rams and the Packers were there. There was trouble, right? <laughs> when you're trying to get uh tiebreakers and those two teams have the head to head, their other wild card teams in the NFC, that's hurtful. Um, and of course, really you start the season two and oh, and then you go three and seven. You know, you have a three and seven stretch across 10 games before finishing the season, winning for your last five. You just can't, you're not making the playoffs. So you go three and seven at any 10 game stretch during an NFL season. And as you mentioned, you know, metric metrically, there's a lot of good things with this team. They're top 10 scoring offense, top 10 scoring defense, third lowest giveaway percentage, number six in takeaway percentage, fourth and third down defense, eighth and red zone defense, like stuff that typically suggests you're a playoff team, but you weren't able to avoid that really terrible low for 10 games and you you came up short and two critical NFC games against the Rams and Packers. Yeah. Um, I, I think you look at a number of their losses they incurred this season as one score losses that when you sit, sit down and do the math, they have a one score loss to green Bay week three by one point. They lose to the Texans by a touchdown. They lose to the Jaguars by a touchdown. They lose to Minnesota by eight points. Uh, they lose to the Lions by five points. They lose to the Rams by eight points. Like you're, you're right there in a lot of games, and uh, you know your your metrics get boosted a little bit when you put uh, 48 on the Falcons in Week 18, and you put 34 nothing up on the Patriots in Week Five. So I certainly think that kind of helps the the big picture balance to look at. Oh, you beat the Panthers 28 to six. Uh, the second time you play them, to beat the Giants by 18 points, 24 to six. So I, I think you end up looking, well, plus 75 point differential. It's pretty good. But I think you could look at week 18, the games against the Giants and the Panthers that they're floundering, and then the, the Patriots game. And if you compartmentalize and not just look at, hey, your whole body of work, but if you look game by game by game as the season unfolds, uh, there are a lot of the closer games that they played. And I know one of the concerns that we have with this team is coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're not able to pull those those out of the weeds and, and case in point, they've already begun their, their decision-making process. They've moved on from Pete Carmichael, the offensive coordinator. So Dennis Allen's already looking for a new offensive coordinator, probably to try to maximize 
Derek Carr. Well, how do you win close games? Well, quarterback play, running the football, pass rush, those are all key elements to doing that. We're and not good at any of those things. Yeah, they weren't, weren't good at those things. Right? Uh, zero game-winning drives for Derek Carr this year, one fourth-quarter comeback. Uh, they couldn't rush the passer, 27th in pressure percentage, 29th in sack percentage. You need negative plays, right? You need to get teams behind the sticks. You need to be able to get more heat on the quarterback. You never made him uncomfortable. And then running the football, yeah, you're 21st in yards per game, 31st in yards per carry. Your two leading ball carriers, Alvin Kamara, 695 yards under four yards per carry. Jamal Williams, 306 yards under three yards per carry. There's just not efficiency there. And I, I certainly think a lot of that stems from uh, how the offensive line depth was stressed. I mean, you had Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz were mainstays for you, but left tackle, left guard, right tackle, those things weren't consistent all season long. And I think for what you have invested in – these areas, whether it's defensive line, offensive line, and quarterback, you needed more, right? Like how many first round picks are not really working out on the defensive line for the Saints, right? They've they've had some players they paid out. Granderson and Jordan are good. The, the other pieces aren't there yet. Uh, and then offensive line, like everyone's a paid veteran and outside of Trevor Penning, who's not healthy, right? Ramcheck misses a bunch of games down the stretch. And so, and of course, Derek Carr, like the, the key things that you're paying for needed to to be there. And then of course, Marshawn Lattimore misses seven games, right? So like, yeah, this is, this is the margins. This is why it didn't work out for you. Yeah. And you, you look at both Lattimore and Michael Thomas, Another high and they, they both yeah. went on IR after their bye week and did not play the rest of the season. Those are two big, big presence players. And then you mentioned the offensive line and, and the pass rush. Trey Turner went on IR, missed the entire season as somebody that they brought in to compete for one of those interior spots. And then Peyton Turner goes on IR and misses almost the entire season as well as a big investment that they've recently made. So then you think about the running back room with the, the Kamara time that he missed Jamal Williams spends a month on injured reserve in the first month of the season. So then Kendra Miller's getting a lot of run early and then Kendra Miller ends up getting hurt in the back half of the year. So just a lot of lack of continuity in the, the backfield as well. So I, I think that manifests when you look at the the 3.6 yards per carry this team averaged on the season trying to run the football. And their 6.2 net yards per attempt was middle of the road. And they really were a, a team that that was opportunistic and feasted. They, all of their wins they, they won or were even in the turnover differential. So there, there's like a certain script that had to be played. And you, you talked about no game winning drives for, for Derek Carr and just watching that season unfold. It certainly felt like there was not a lot of good vibes in new Orleans with that group, offensive lineman yelling at Carr, <laughs> And then Jameis Winston and, and they're, they're calling audibles at the end of the game to get Jamal Williams a touchdown against the, the, uh, advice to the coach or the the call of the coach, and then he's got to apologize for for his players. It's just a lot that feels like it's not necessarily X's and O's oriented as well. That kind of sticks out in my head for this this team specifically that is so talented, and and yet, you know, they 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 look up after the Detroit game, they're five and seven. To their credit, they win four of the last five games to put themselves in position to get a little helping and win the division, but that didn't happen for them underachieving right i think that's really what it comes down to a lot of a lot of what you counted on to do more didn't and i worry about this coaching staff and part of what they'll need to sort out is their offensive coordinator which is a nice segue for what we're gonna get into next year the big decisions that the new orleans saints are facing this offseason so be sure to stick with us this episode is brought to you by better help sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get on you, and it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than what's going on with our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the very best version of yourself It's just not for people who have experienced major trauma. So if you've been thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. They got a great deal here for you. You can visit betterhelp.com slash locked on, and that'll get you 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, 
H E L P dot com slash locked on. Folks, you got to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun, easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. I love the format. It's incredible. It's just you against the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros and including sharks. All you do is you select two or more players, you pick more or less of their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long. Picks can be made in under a minute. And then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. So check it out. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. And that'll and be sure to use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. And we we talked about some of the near, near misses for this team too, as I'm just I'm re- recollecting some of the early season games. They blew a 17 nothing fourth quarter lead to the Packers too. You talk about that that game specifically. When you lose on tiebreakers at the end of the road, you look back and you say, "Oh, yeah, with 11 minutes left, we were up 17 and nothing." It's tough, man. <laughs> you tough. lose that game. That's a hard. I know that's a hard way to lose a game when you blow two touchdown fourth quarter lead like that. So um, that's certainly, I, I think, when you reflect on this season, same season. Um, probably a number of, of late game execution that this, this team would like back. Well, whether they would like him back or not, Saints fan, Dennis Allen's going to be your head coach. Um, but you are going to get a new offensive coordinator. And if you want to like parse it out and say, well, yeah, defense looks pretty strong and Dennis Allen's a defensive guy, like, okay. And you just need to figure it out on offense. You know, Pete Carmichael was there forever, right? He, he was the offensive coordinator since 2009 uh, with the organization since 2006. And obviously there's a lot of success there, uh, particularly with Drew Brees and of course, Sean Payton, but um, you are going to get a new offensive coordinator. And it feels like that's a really important decision to get right Um, because you have some exciting talent on the offensive side of the football, whether it is the offensive lineman, uh, you have Rashid Saheed, you have Chris Olave, you know, you got some stuff here and finding the right guy to coordinate and move this thing forward is, is going to be critical. So step one here for me is nailing the offensive coordinator hire. This could be Greg Olson, right? I can understand why overlap Derek Carr, OC uh, currently quarterback was the quarterback's coach in Seattle this past year. So there's a head coaching change. So he'll be back out in the market. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You gave Carr a contract with how you've managed your salary cap that you, you're you need to see it through a little bit more than just this year. Right. So some, somebody with some familiarity and how to run an offense that car gets. Yeah. Because it felt like there were times where he didn't get it, get it this year. Um, I, I think is probably the path that I would prefer them to take. I, I, and I think this is speaks to something we've seen throughout the league. Throw Tom Brady aside. He never counts for anything. But we've seen some veteran quarterbacks that were at places for a long time go to new teams, and that organization has to learn that quarterback, whether it's Russell Wilson and what they never learned, Deshaun Watson, that's been a bumpy start, and now Derek Carr, right? Long-term quarterbacks going and play quarterbacks somewhere else. It doesn't always just be lightning in a bottle. And I think New Orleans, for this past season, had that opportunity to get to know Derek Carr. And yeah, I think bringing something familiar at offensive coordinator feels like a solid choice to help get ahead of what is appearing to be a pretty steep curve. How about Todd Downing? He's a quarterback's coach and OC in early stage Derek Carr. Like that year when he was really good and threw for 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns and get them both. (laughs) <laughs> and he's the passing game coordinator with the Jets. Yeah. And certainly an, uh, an upgrade opportunity there. He was previously with Tennessee as the offensive coordinator. So he has experience as an offensive coordinator. Go, go kick Derek Carr's little black book and see what previous coaches he's had with when he was successful with, with the Raiders that is available and, and in the league, but not in a spot where you couldn't offer them a promotion to come run your offense in New Orleans. That's what I would do. So here comes the part where we talk about expiring contracts and cap space. And it's never more interesting to do that than with 
the New Orleans New Saints. Orleans. So um, they got to create a bunch of cap space per usual. They're in the hole. Uh, courtesy of our friends over at Over the Cap, they can do simple restructures and do all of them and create $28.6 million in cap space. They do all of them. They're at $35.7 million in cap space. So it, once again, just a ton of moves are going to have to be made so that the, the Saints can operate. And in just with the way that they've restructured stuff too, Void it's not even space. like you have a lot of really attractive like cut or trade candidates either. No. It's this is you have to max restructure Derek Carr. You have to max restructure Ryan Ramchick. And whether you like max restructure, that's interpreted whether you want to put void years on the back end of that or not. But like the maximum amount of salary that you can restructure, you need to restructure. Um, Alvin Kamara, not a lot of flexibility with that one either. That's probably going to have to be a uh, restructure candidate as well. You could save. Uh, what eight million dollars in cap space on that one? Ram check saves you twelve. Car saves you twenty three. Cam Jordan, I mean, he doesn't even have. I guess he's got a big uh, bonus that you could restructure. You could save nine nine and a half on that one. So I'm just taking all the top names and I'm doing restructures for them. Demario Davis is eight. So like, look for all of these headlines to come through. Taysom Hill, you can restructure and save six and a half. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, obviously they're committed there. He's already, not, yeah, you can't nope, do anything with him. Nope, not doing that one. Never mind. Nope. Uh, Eric <laughs> McCoy, you can save almost $7 million with a max restructure there. Uh, Andrews Pete's already got, geez, 13.6 and just dead cap for Andrews Pete. Right. He's an expiring contract. Him yeah. And, so he, he yeah. was not under contract, but he's on the books with voided money from how you've done this for the past five years. For 13.6. Uh, I guess Carl Granderson with his bonus, you could restructure that and open up 7.2 million. Michael Thomas, there's not a lot that you could do here. Ty Matthew, you could restructure and save about six. So I've done restructures for Carr, Ramchek, Jordan, Kamara, Davis, Taysom Hill, Eric McCoy, Carl Granderson, and Ty Matthew. And now we're in the green. Now we can afford to sign a player. The good news is you don't have notable expiring contracts that concern me. I mean, are you concerned about any of these? Andrews Pete, you're probably happy that's a, that contract's up. Yeah. James Hurst is a 32 year old swing offensive lineman. Who cares? Right. Like, I think not the a biggest, whole lot. The biggest names that you have here, and I'm being dead serious, uh, Rashid Shaheed is an exclusive rights free agent. He's that back. one's got to be back, but that one will, you can get back for cheap. The, yeah. the ERFA tenders under a million dollars. Lock him in. You have uh, Zach Bond is probably a name that I would be sensitive to and wanting to bring back with some of his versatility. I know he played a little bit this year. Uh, and then Andrew Dowell's a special teams guy stands out as like maybe the next most important name on the list. Yeah, so that, that's a reason to be encouraged, which we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But yeah, you got to create a bunch of cap space, but it's not like you're staring at this list of free agents that you're like, man, I got to get these players back. Um, they have probably the easiest fifth year decision ever. Peyton Turner, uh, it's time for them to decide on his fifth year option. Kylie's no. never played more than 171 snaps in a season, 144 snaps in 2021, 171 last year, 25 this year. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm not trying to be mean. Are you surprised that that hasn't, obviously the injuries were a factor this year. So you acknowledge that, but he was always just like a super toolsy effort guy at Houston, um, but he was still stiff at Houston. Yeah, it's that doesn't seem it tool, first round but stiff is like it's a weird place to be. I'm just fortunate they took him over Greg Russo. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, that was not a that that what I mean, what do you do here? This is it's it's not a good pick. It's not a good pick. Um he's still young, he's 25 years old. He turns he just turned 25, like and he's but he's showing you nothing. He's showing you nothing of sustained play to get you excited. So, so that'll be a hard pass. I guess the, it, I know we got to get ready to go to Levy Grill, so I want to sneak this in at the buzzer. They're just going to do this in perpetuity for the next ten years and just steadily whittle away. I the was one you do have, yeah, dude. I was thinking about that while we were going through this. Like, at what point do you just accept that you're going to suck for a little bit and just get out of this? It doesn't have to be a long time either, like a year or two, right? Like, but it's like with the way that you've structured your contracts and you've been restructuring everybody. 
they're not really tradable assets unless you eat the cap, which doesn't help you if you're trying to shed contracts out and eat cap and clear cap so that you can have more operating expenses. Because I just did Carr, Ramchek, Jordan, Kamara, Davis, Hill, McCoy, Granderson, Matthew, Ruiz, May, Juwan Johnson. Restructured all those guys. I'm at $19.5 million after I do the exclusive rights free agents on Rashid Chay. Great. Now I'm 56 in the red for next year. So it's like the number that you're in the red to start with gets smaller and smaller and smaller every year, but you just get more and more and more and more rigid yeah. where Andrew Pete's a great example. If you try to move somebody now after doing this for three years, you're going to accelerate all that dead money you kicked out and it's going to be a bigger cap hit than it was in the first place. It's not going to help you. When they lost Drew Brees and Peyton Manning, excuse me, Drew Brees and Sean Payton. Manning and Brees yeah, in the yeah. same quarterback room was probably the greatest quarterback. Yeah, I'll tell you, they should, have, should have done a lot of good things there. That was your chance. That was your chance to just like reset. You didn't have to go out and do things like sign Marcus May and Ty Matthew and Derek Carr. And, it, you know, like all of that was silly. Like you, you needed to take your medicine, especially if you're just going to sit there and roll with Dennis Allen. Like what, what? You had to take your medicine, and, and instead you didn't, and we're just going to be in this perpetual cycle. But uh, that's enough for the negativity. We're going to get positive here in just right. a second uh, on a 9-8 and eight football team that was in it all the way to the end. So be sure to stick with us. Folks, I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but can we talk for just a minute about being prepared for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics. And look, I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if one of my loved ones got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medications that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, and more. And look, this stuff can happen to any of us. So be sure to visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will then be reviewed by a board-certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use code locked on to get $20 off your order. You ready for the poem? Yes. Fight on, my men. For I'm hurt, but I am not slain. I'll lay me down and bleed a while, and I will rise and fight again. New Orleans Saints. It's time for you to lick your wounds and put on your optimist fan hats. And let's talk about the reasons for optimism for the New Orleans Saints as they move forward. For me, I, I want to kind of build upon what I mentioned earlier about you had your onboarding season with Derek Carr. And you've opened the door with letting Pete Carmichael go to surround him with perhaps a familiar face. You've mentioned a couple of them in Olsen and Downing, uh, but also you know, maybe an idea of structurally the type of players that you need to try to get uh, to, to complement his skill set. And so I think you should be better for what you've been through. Um, and it was an onboarding season where, like I mentioned before the break, you were in it until the very end. So you don't have a ton of draft capital, but you do have two top 50 picks at your disposal. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, for a recap, your other assets, you have your own first, you have the Broncos second. 45, yeah. Because your second went to Philadelphia as a part of the Jahan, Trevor Penning pick swap. Mm-hmm. First round pick pick swap with the Eagles in 2022. Your third round pick went to the Broncos as part of the rights for Sean Payton. And then your fourth round pick went to the Jaguars last year when you manifested a fourth round pick out of thin air to draft Jay Kaner. So we're optimistic. You mm -hmm. have two top 50 picks. Make them count. Make them count. And I don't know. I, I, I look at the the core of the team, and you have Alave, and you have Shaid, 
and you've got an offensive line that's got a lot of pieces that's locked into it. James Hurst has been a reliable multi-position player for you, but you got Ruiz locked in and McCoy locked in, and I know Ramchek's getting a little banged up as he's getting towards the end of his career, but he's still a really good offensive tackle. The group's here, and, and I do think with a, a offense that's more tailored to what Derek Carr sees and feels and does well, you can get more out of that group with consistency. I know you've brought this up a few times in terms of opponents. Have you taken a gander at the 2024 opponents for the New Orleans Saints? Uh, I will let you work through the future schedule. Yeah. So the NFC South, right, is a uh, good place to be. Good place to be. Nine and eight Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the champs. The Panthers exist here and the Falcons who are resetting mm -hmm. right now. Your home games and your, uh, of course, Panthers, Falcons, Bucks, but your other home games, Browns, Broncos, Raiders, Rams, Eagles, Commanders, your road games, NFC South, Cowboys, Packers, Chiefs, Chargers, Giants. Feels manageable. So if I'm counting, they, sh they should beat the Panthers twice. Who knows what happens with Atlanta? Maybe you go home and home there. Who knows what happens with Tampa? You probably go home and home there. You can go four and two in the division, though, if you four do that. Four and two in the division. Yeah. Then you play the Raiders, Commanders, Giants. Broncos. Yeah, you, you, your path to nine is not that difficult to get. The challenge is getting more than nine so you can win the division. And you get to play the Packers and Rams again. Beat them. Right. <laughs> it's right there for you. Beat those right. teams. Anything else? Optimists? Well, I, I, I think to reiterate that, yeah, you're in a tough cap position. You don't have any notable expiring contracts that are concerning, right? Like, I feel like that's a good place to be for a nine and eight team that, as we discussed year one with Derek Carr, a lot to learn there. So you should return a lot of it. You should be able to build a little bit and some continuity will be helpful in a easy division with a not very daunting schedule. But yeah. Sounds good to me. You're, you just got to maximize your, your two draft picks to, there's few teams that need day one contributors more with their first few picks than the New Orleans Saints. But also don't do, what is the thing they did with the Eagles trade? It's like they need a left tackle and a receiver. So let's go ahead and do this weird trade with the Eagles because we they, feel like I mean, we're those two players they hit away. The receiver. <laughs> they did. Chris Olave. Yeah, we should, here he is, Levy Grell. You have Chris Olave, who's awesome. Yes. Awesome young player. Other good players too. I mean, like, Carl Granderson and Paulson Adebo had a nice season this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Demario Davis still one of my favorite players. Still in the league. got it. He still yeah, got man. it. McCoy and Ruiz and Ryan Ramchek are still part of your offensive line. You got stuff right. Like you're okay. Get a little bit more lucky, but also get yourself more fully aligned for the most important piece that you have, which is your quarterback. And they're in the process of doing that. So bravo. We'll see what hire they come up with. We will also see you tomorrow. That is going to do for us here on Locked on NFL Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here. And we'll talk to you all again tomorrow.